So what exactly is Metabox? In its simplest terms, Metabox is a WordPress plugin that offers a relatively easy way of creating custom post types, adding meta fields, and then you can apply these either to existing post types or to your custom ones, as well as a whole host of other options. Now, some of these options are built into the core plugin and others can be added through a collection of add-ons. Now, while you can use Metabox as a standalone option to add all manner of powerful and useful features to an existing WordPress website, it also integrates with many popular page builders. In this video, we'll be focusing on using it with Elementor Pro and combining that with Metabox to see how to get up and running with some of the key features that are offered. Now, this video is squarely aimed at the new users of Metabox and new users of dynamic data inside tools like Metabox and Elementor Pro. Now, before I kick things off, it is worth noting that at the time of recording this video, which is April 2021, Metabox is running a special lifetime deal over on AppSumo. Now, links to this are in the description below if you'd like to grab this lifetime deal and get started. Okay, so let's just get the ball rolling and take a look at how everything starts to work. Okay, so let's start off by taking a look at the most important thing, which is the tools we're going to be using for today's tutorial. Obviously, we need to have Metabox installed. So we've got Metabox, which is the free plugin, and then we've got Metabox Core, which is the kind of core extension package, which is where we can have access to the extra features if and when you want to use them. Next up, we've got Elementor Pro because we need to have access to the dynamic data. So we have that installed. Elementor, or six, we need that. Elemental Custom Skin. Now, this is just an extra step I'm going to show you. You don't have to use this. It just gives you the ability to be able to create your custom loop listing layouts. I'll show you that. And if you want to learn more about Elemental Custom Skin or Ellie Custom Skin, then you can check out the dedicated tutorial on that. I'll put a link in the description below. So if you want to check it out, take a look. From an appearance point of view, we've just got a simple install of the Hello theme, which is the Elemental theme, which is basically just a blank theme that allows us to have a lot more control over how things are set up. Okay. So with that being said, what exactly do we need to do first of all? Well, let's go and hop into the Metabox section and take a look at what we have inside there to get you kind of up to speed with the plugin itself before we move on and start building things. Okay, so this is kind of like the overview that tells you, you know, getting started, link to the online generator if you wanted to use that, post and taxonomies, some information on how to get started with those. It's kind of a good starting point. The extensions, this is where you can see the different extensions you can have. Now, depending upon what plan you have, you will have less or more of these options available to you. And these are kind of like integral plugins that are part of the Metabox tool set that expands what you can do. And the nice thing I like about this is it's very modular. So if you don't need to use things like conditional logic or setting pages and things, you don't need to install them. You can just ignore those and then cut down on the overhead of setting things up and using everything. So you can see there's quite a lot inside you. And if you want to view all of the extensions, you can hop over and take a look at all of those. There's a range of different free ones available to you, which are quite useful. Now you'll notice that part of this is we've got free extensions for things like Elementor, Beaver Builder, and so on. So we've got direct integration into these tools if we want to use it. We will be using the Elementor integrator, and I'll explain that in a little bit when we move into Elementor. Okay, so that's kind of like an overview there. And if you want to check these out, you don't have to come back to the dashboard. You can simply come down to the extensions option in the bottom left-hand side. And this is going to show you what you have access to. Like I say, it depends upon the actual setup, the license you have, and all those kinds of things. And if you bought this from AppSumo, the single license entry will give you everything you can see on screen. But you are going to need to go up to tier two, I believe, to get access to things like the Metabox, views, blocks, custom table, and so on. So we'll take a look at those in a different video if you're interested in those kinds of things. So you can see everything we have inside here. We can filter these down in the same ways you can do on the front end of the site. And as you can see, the Elemental Integrator is already connected up inside here. So we can click on that if we want to, and you'll see that'll take us over. Give us more information about it. We can download it from you. It'll tell us how to use it, all those kinds of useful things. The other thing that I do like about the way that Metabox is set up is when you activate or deactivate any of these different sort of add-ons, they don't show up inside your plugin section of WordPress, which means that it really does streamline what you see and what you don't see. So if you want to enable or disable anything inside you, you can simply just check on it and that'll remove it. And you can see we get little warning notifications on some of these extensions to say that we need to have a particular feature installed to be able to get access to it. For example, in this case, if we were using Beaver Thema, we need to have that installed. Otherwise, we can't activate this. You can see it's unavailable to us. Same goes for the Facet WP Integrator and Yoast SEO. 
So that's how we can use those things. And if we want to disable anything, we just uncheck it and simply hit the save option at the bottom. I'm going to leave everything inside there because this is pretty much what you're going to see when you install Metabox. Okay, so what do we have down the left hand side? Things are broken down into how you probably expect them if you're used to working with most tools inside WordPress, especially when it comes to working with meta fields. You've got things like post types, taxonomies, custom fields, relationships if you've got the option selected, again, settings pages if you've got the option selected, templates extension, and your license details. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a typical simple project. We're going to hop into post types first of all, and this is where we can create our custom post type. So the first thing you want to do is create a new post type. So we're going to say add new. And from there, we've got basically five different options. Now, if you're coming from a background of working with advanced custom fields, you'll know that a lot of what we're going to do will combine multiple different tools. For example, custom post type UI, ACF, those kinds of things. In this example, we basically have all of those built directly into Metabox, which makes it a one stop solution. If you're coming from pods, however, this probably feels a lot more familiar. So what do we have? Your general, your labels, your advanced, your support, and your taxonomies. So we're going to go through and create something. So the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to call this properties. This is the plural version. Singular enable, property. And you can see the slug is automatically generated. Now, if you don't want to use that, you can change that to wherever you want. Just make sure you separate any spaces with either an underscore or a dash. Next on our list, we've got the labels option. And this is where you can change any of the labels that are used inside the dashboard of WordPress. Again, if you're coming from the something like custom post type UI, all this is going to feel familiar. Same goes for jet engine, same goes for pods. If you want to change these, you can do, but you can leave the defaults if you want to as well, which is what we're going to do. Hop into advanced, and this is where we can control various different aspects of how this displays in the dashboard, how it displays inside the database, those kinds of useful things. Want to drop in a description? You can do that at the top. Want to make this public? Again, you can do that at the top. So what do we have? Hierarchical. Do you want to use a hierarchy inside your custom post type? Do you want to exclude this from your search? All these kinds of things should be self-explanatory. I don't need to go through all of these because in all honesty, like I say, most of them are pretty self-explanatory. What we're going to do, though, is take a look at the menu position after. We can position where we want this inside our dashboard on the left-hand side, which is pretty cool to see. We leave that as it is there. We can choose the icon we want to use. So we're going to use this house icon because we're going to deal with properties. And then we can choose what capability type. Do we want this to act like a post? Do we want to have it act like a page? Or do we want to have it customized? We're going to leave it as post because it is simply a custom post type. Now, this is an important one, has archive. A lot of people find a problem when they're working with dynamic content and using tools like ACF and Metabox and so on, that when they come to create the template and the archive inside Elementor Pro, there's no option to associate that with the, the sort of conditions. And the reason being is this probably isn't checked. So make sure this is always checked if you want to have a custom archive that you can set up and build through something like Elementor Pro. That is inside there, so that's cool. We can change the custom archive slug if we want to. We can also have a custom rewrite slug. All these things are entirely up to you if you want to change them. And the same goes for things like your permalink structure. I would generally recommend if you're new to this and you don't know what you're doing, leave those basic options as they are and don't worry about them. You've got one thing that's worth looking at the bottom though. Delete with user. Whether to move posts to trash when deleting a user. So in other words, if a post, a property in this example, has been deleted, or the user has been deleted, I should say, that all the posts get deleted with it. Up to you whether you want to enable or disable that. That's something that could obviously cause problems if you set it incorrectly. Supports. This is basically where we can choose what basic options from the normal WordPress post type we can use inside our custom post type. That might sound confusing, but the basic principle is you've got all these default fields, which you're probably used to if you're working with WordPress, your title, your editor, excerpt, author, thumbnail, or featured image, those kinds of things. Default is we've got title, editor, and thumbnail, and generally that's probably all you're going to really want. But if you need more, all you need to do is check to enable any of these, and that's it. If you want to, you can always come back in and you can edit any of these post types you create with Metabox and enable or disable anything if you find you want to add it or remove it later on. Then we've got taxonomies. Now, at the moment, we haven't created any taxonomies, so all that's listed here are the default ones we'd have as part of a standard copy of WordPress. And if you had something like WooCommerce installed, you'd see extra options inside here. When we create taxonomies a little later, then you'll see if we wanted to, they would also be listed inside here. However, we've done everything we need. And we've got two options. If you don't want to use a page builder and you simply want to grab the PHP code to drop into your functions PHP file or use a tool you know, to actually insert this into your code, you could use get PHP code and that would give you all the information. 
or what we're going to do is we're going to simply hit publish because we're going to use this with Elementor Pro anyway. So there's our custom post type. Now, if we take a look on the left hand side, you can see we've got a new entry called properties and inside there we've got all properties and add new. So operating in much the same way as you'd expect with a normal custom post type. So all pretty straightforward so far. Let's take a look now at taxonomies. So we'll open up the taxonomies, we'll add new inside here, and we're going to give this a plural name. So we're going to call this property types. We'll just copy that from there just to speed things up. Property type, and you can see everything else is filled out for us. Same thing goes with the labels. All those options are inside here in exactly the same way as we have when we created a post type. Hop into advanced, and this is where you can set up the various different parameters. Again, it's worth taking a little time just to look through this, just to get yourself familiar with it, read the little notes next to it, and see if there's anything you need to enable or disable. For me, I generally set my taxonomies as hierarchical, even if I don't want to use a hierarchy inside there. And the key reason for this is it just makes working with taxonomies inside the editor itself of WordPress a lot easier. You don't have to type anything in because you simply get checkboxes. If you leave that unchecked, you will end up with just an empty field that you have to start typing in. And if you don't know what it is you're looking for, it can kind of be a bit of a, a nightmare to try to pinpoint what you want. So we're going to enable that just for an ease of use side of things. Now, if we scroll on through, there's a couple of other things that are quite useful inside you. You can see we've got things like show admin column. Do you want this particular taxonomy to show up as an admin column? Generally, that's quite useful. So we're going to say, yes, we want that. Do you want to show it inside the quick edit? Do you want this to be something that from the actual listing of the properties that they can just click to edit or bulk edit? And these options or this particular taxonomy option will be listed inside there as well. Again, from a usability point of view, this is something that can make life just a lot easier for the end user. So we're going to enable all those options. You can see we've also got things then like if we want to control our permalink structure, for example, we want to have a permalink structure like blog or posts or news or something like that, we can enable that and get a little bit more control over those kinds of things. And the same goes for your hierarchical URL. Do you want to have a rewrite tag or not? Again, if you're not sure, leave it as it is. Then finally, we've got sort at the bottom, whether this taxonomy should be remembered, the, sorry, should remember the order in which terms are added to the objects. I'm going to leave that as it is unchecked. And we're going to hop over to post types and we're going to link this new taxonomy to our property. So we're going to uncheck post. We're going to check property and that's now been linked to it. So we'll publish that and that's that side of things completed. Now, if we take a look at our properties, we've got a new section called property types. And inside there, we could start adding the property types. So let's do that. We're going to say this is apartment. I'll add that inside there. We'll say house, add that inside there. And we'll just say flat and add that inside there. So now we've created a taxonomy and added some values into that taxonomy. Okay, so we're definitely on our way now to creating our custom post type and setting everything up. Next thing we want to do is create some meta fields and associate those with our custom post type. To do that, all we're going to do is come over to the meta box entry. And from there, we're going to choose the option for custom fields. This is where we're going to control all the custom fields, how we're going to link those through those kinds of things. Now we are going to keep this really, really simple. Just want to get you sort of started with how this works. So what we're going to do is we're going to say add new field group. And a field group is just a collection of meta fields. Now we're going to add in, we're going to call this property details. And now we've got two options. We've got fields and we've got settings. Start off with, let's go to the fields. First thing to do is go and add our first field inside here. So we're, like I said, we're going to keep this super simple. First thing we're going to do is we're going to find the option to insert some numeric data because we're going to add in the price of this particular property. So we'll choose number. Once we choose that, we now open up all the options for this particular type of custom meta field. First things first, the label. Well, number doesn't make any sense. So we're going to call this price. Actually, let's call this property price just so it makes labeling things just easier. So this property price. You can see the type is set to number, but if we want to retrospectively change that, we can, if we've made a mistake, we can change this to any of the options that are available. We leave it as number though, that's perfectly fine. Your label description and input description, totally optional. And you can see most of these will have little help symbols by the side of it. So if you're ever unsure what any of these do, you can just hover over and find out what it does for you. Anything with a little red asterisk to the side of it will just say that is a, something that is has to be inserted. You have to have that property ID value inside you. But most other things are purely optional. Next up, we've got the minimum and maximum values if you want to apply those. And then you can set your step value if you want to. We're going to leave this something that they can actually input themselves directly. So we're not going to worry about that. 
Default values, placeholders, size of input text box or input box. These are sort of styling kinds of things. And if you want to put placeholder text in this, you can kind of tell people what needs to go in. You could do that. For this, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Is this required? Absolutely. Not much point in having a property listing without a price. You can disable it. You can set it to read only. So if you wanted to have a field inside you that only had a predefined value, but you wanted the end user to see it, you could set this to read only. Clonable, as his name suggests, you could clone this. Next up, do you want to show this in the admin column, which can be kind of useful. So we're going to say, yes, we want to put the price in there. That now opens up even more options for us. Column position, we can choose we want this to be after, before, or replace, and then we can sort of drop in what we actually want it to be before, after, or replace. So we're going to say this goes after the title. Now, the title, as we already know, is going to be one of the default WordPress fields. That's going to be, in this example, the name of the property. Column title, we're just going to put in price, and we'll put the actual pound sign to say this is what it's for. Column content before and after, as his name would suggest, if you want to put content before or after that, you can do. You can also make this sortable, which in this example would make sense because we're dealing with numeric values on house prices. So it makes it easy to sort these on ascending or descending. And you want to make them searchable and filterable, up to you. I'm going to leave those disabled. And then you've got your columns. How many columns do you want this to actually span over? And you can see we've got a range of different things. So we're going to say this can be one column. We'll try that. If you want to add a tooltip in, you can enable that, and you can put in whatever tooltip information and the position that you want. We'll disable that because, again, this is pretty self-explanatory. Come up to the advanced section. You can see we've got some more options inside you, like validation, custom settings, and conditional logic, and so on. I'll leave those for another day because I think these are above and beyond the sort of beginner's guide that I'm kind of doing in this video. Okay, so there's our first field. So what we can do now is we can simply come in and add another field in. So let's add a second field in. And this one is going to be for the location. So for this one, we're just going to simply use a simple field and we just want to use text. There we go. We'll just choose text as the option inside there. ID, we're just going to call this, first of all, let's actually do the label. So we're going to call this property location. And we'll just set the ID. That's perfectly fine. We'll set that as property location as well. So property underscore location. Say okay, no spaces. Type text, perfectly fine. So you can see we can set anything up inside you if we want to. Most of this doesn't need anything because, again, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. We don't want to show this in the admin column because I don't think it makes a lot of sense. And we can choose the number of columns and add tool tips and so on. Okay, so we've set what we want up, the basics. What we're going to do now is simply come back up and we're going to go to the set in section because we need to now associate this with our post type. So this is where we can set those kinds of things up. First of all, we've got the location. So post type, and you can see it's linked it up by default to post, which we don't want. Disable that, we're gonna click, and what we want, we wanna link this to our property. So now these custom fields are gonna be linked to the property custom post type that we've created. If you wanna add things like location rules and toggle rules and conditional logic, you can do those. And again, these are things that I don't wanna cover in this because I think they go beyond the basics. Where do you want to position this? You can put it either after the content or you can put it on the side. We're going to leave it after content because it's a bit more information. And we can set the priority. So we, if we have multiple different field groups, we can set the priority for these. And that will condition where they'll show up inside the hierarchy of the custom meta fields. Okay, so you can check the style inside here. You can collapse it by default. You can set tab styles, all those kinds of useful things. However, we're going to leave it as it is. And we're simply going to hit update. And that now is our custom field setup, all configured and linked up to our property custom post type. So let's come over to our properties now and let's go to all properties. And now you can see there's our title and there's our date, which are default fields that we have inside any kind of listing with WordPress. But we have our property type, which is our custom post type listed inside here as well. Oh, sorry, our custom taxonomy. And we have the price field, which is a custom field that we've just set up. Now we can come in and we can say add new. And if we take a look, you can see this looks very much the same as a normal WordPress Gutenberg editing section, title, content, all your things on the right-hand side, like featured image and so on. But we have some extra options. We have property types, which is our custom taxonomy. And there's our taxonomies, apartment, flat, and house. You can add more inside you in the normal way that you would with WordPress. And if we scroll down a little bit, you can see at the bottom, we've got our custom meta fields for property price and property location. Okay, so let's add our first property in. We're just going to call this Edinburgh Heights. Doesn't really matter what we call it. We're going to drop in some filler text inside there. We'll just come over and add the property type. We're going to say this is an apartment and we'll add a featured image. I've already uploaded a couple of images we can use inside here. So we're going to say we'll use 
this one. Okay, set a featured image. So nothing there that you haven't already seen tens of thousands of times using WordPress. However, let's just use these new options at the bottom. So property price, we're going to set this at 490,000. And the property location, we'll just put in Edinburgh, United Kingdom. Okay, so now we'll just publish this and confirm that. And there's our first property with our custom meta fields inserted. So if we hop back out of this now, you can see there's Edinburgh Heights. You can see there's our price. There's the property type and the date. Now I'm just going to add a couple more properties using exactly the same technique that I've just shown you, just so we've got some more to work with. And then we move on to the next stage. Okay, so there's our couple of properties all set up. Prices, everything set inside there. So now we've created our meta boxes, created our taxonomies and built everything. How do we actually now get this to display on any kind of pages inside Elementor? Well, it's very easy. We're going to create a couple of templates. We're going to start off, first of all, with the archive side of things. So we're going to come into Elementor. We're going to come into the template section, into Theme Builder, and we're going to create a new archive. So we're just going to call this archive, and we're just going to add new, and we're going to call this property archive. Create our template. And if you want to, you can use one of the predefined kind of layers as a starting point. For this example, though, we're going to get rid of that and build everything from scratch. So let's add a new section in. Let's add a little bit of space around this so it doesn't look quite so ugly. We'll just set 50 pixels above and below. And for ease, we're just going to work with some of the built-in options. We're going to drag this posts option in. And what this will do is now, this will just show us what it thinks is right. In this example, it thinks it's going to use one of the default posts. Obviously, that isn't the case. So what we can do is we can scroll down to the query section, expand that out, and we can change the source from posts, and you'll see there's properties, which is our new custom post type. So that's now working inside Elemental Pro. We can choose that option, and that now pulls up our three properties. Obviously, if you had more properties, more would be listed. Now you can go ahead and you can include by if you want to. You can sort these in different orders. We can add some pagination inside here as well, and we'll say we'll have something like numbers and previous and so on, page limit. You won't see anything because at the moment we only have three items. But now we can go ahead if we want to come into the layout and we can change this over to cards, for example, and we can just remove anything we don't want. So things like the dates and comments, we don't want those inside there. We don't want to worry about having options like the avatar. So you can see you can quickly and easily create a nice looking archive page. So we'll publish this and we're going to add a condition in. Now the condition is basically where do we want to use this particular template? At the moment, you can see the default is all archives, but if we expand that, we have a lot more options. We want to work with just the properties archive because we set a custom query up inside you. We don't want to assign it to anything else. So we're going to just come down to property archive, choose that option and say save and close. So that now has become the default archive only for our properties. So that's the first part of this done. Now we can come back out of this and we can start creating our single post where we can pull in some of the dynamic data we've just added in through Metabox. So same again, we're going to come back to our theme builder. Inside our theme builder, this time we're just going to choose the option for single post. And we're going to add a new single post and we're just going to call this default single property. Create our template and again, we'll have options to choose some of the predefined layouts which we're going to ignore for this example. We'll just add in a new section. And again, we'll do the same thing. We'll just add a little bit of space around this. So just to make it look a little bit more professional. And now we can start building out the different parts of our actual page layer. Now you can see we've got single down the left hand side. And these are all the default single sections that we can use, the widgets we can use to build out our single template. So let's start off by saying we want to use a featured image. We'll drag and drop that inside there. And you can see nothing is showing up only because we haven't told it what data we want to use to work inside our template to make our lives easier when we see how this all works. So we can do that by coming down to the little settings icon on the bottom left. From there, we can choose the preview settings. We're going to change this now to property, which is our custom post type. And then if we want to, we can just choose something inside here. So we're going to start typing, find our Edinburgh Heights, apply the preview. And we should find once this loads back in, we'll see there's our featured image for that particular property. So now we've got a nice visual way of being able to build our template out using the dynamic data that we've got as part of our custom post time. So we'll start off with our featured image and we can select this and you can see we can change the values over inside here. So we'll set this to be higher quality if we've got a higher quality version and you can set captions and links and things like that. Okay, so that's the first part. Next thing we want to do, we want to just grab the post title, which is going to be the name of the property itself. 
So we'll drag that inside there. Now this doesn't look great because at the moment I'm using a smaller image than we actually have displayed. So we can just set this to full, for example, and that'll give us a better quality one. Okay. So there's our Edinburgh Heights, which is the name of this particular property. And you can style this to your heart's content. I'm not going to worry about that because this is more a case of showing you how to use Metabox and Elementor than it is to show you how to style everything. I'm sure you're more than comfortable doing that. Okay, let's grab the actual content now. So grab our post content and drop that under there. And there's our post content for this particular property. So these are the normal default WordPress features. There's nothing about this that's custom post type orientated. However, we've got the price and we've got the location and they are custom meta fields that we've created with Metabox. Now we can pull that data in. So let's just say underneath the Edinburgh Heights and before this, we want to drop in the price and the location. We can do that simply by coming back out of this and we can use either text editor or heading. It's entirely up to you. For this example, I'll use a heading and drop that underneath there. We'll set this to something like H6. So it has not as much weight, but it's still important because obviously prices and things like that are going to be important data. Now, if you've never used Elementor Pro before, and you've never linked that up to dynamic data, you'll see in lots of different locations, you get this little database icon, which relates to dynamic tags. If we click on that, you can see there's lots and lots of information from providing you have the Elementor Pro or the Elementor widget add-on added into Metabox, you'll start to see Metabox related information inside here. So under post, you can see a Metabox field. Underneath archive, Metabox field, site metabox field and if we scroll down you can see we might have a different option in different places so depend upon the kind of widget that you're working with and where the data can come from all those values will have metabox options so now if we choose underneath post metabox field we'll select that now we can choose what field we want to reference click on there and you can see anything we've got inside you property price and property location underneath our property custom post type are now listed and available to us to access and use these inside our template. It doesn't have to be a template though. You can use these inside pages if you want to. Lots of different options when it comes to working with Elementor and dynamic data. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull in the property price. We'll select that option and you'll see there's our price. And now what we can do is we can come into advanced and we can say before this, we wanna put in property price, put a colon inside there and we'll just then put at the end of this, the pound sign. So we know exactly what values we're working with and there's our property price. So now what we can do is we can repeat that process now for the next piece of information, which is the custom field for our location. So we do the same again. We simply come up, which is the option for a heading, drag and drop that into our setup, come in, change that to H6, choose the dynamic tags option, choose Metabox field, expand the field option out and choose property location, come into advanced, and we're just gonna put inside here, location and a colon and a space, and then we'll find there's our data pulled in from our custom meta field. So now we've set the template up, let's publish this. And then we can apply the condition we want to use. So we'll add a condition. And again, you can see it comes up and tries to use this as the global setup for all singular posts. Well, we don't want that. We're going to expand that out. We're going to look for property and we're just going to choose properties. Once we set that, we're going to leave this set to all. So any property inside our properties custom post type will use this template. We'll save and close, and we've now set everything up. So now we can go ahead and test this out. Now, before we go ahead and test this page out, I want to add it into my navigation. But the thing is, what causes a lot of people a lot of problems is, well, what link do I use? So if we open up the screen options, you'll see inside here, we have things like properties and property type. And if we open those up and we add those in, you'll see we've got property and inside there, we've got each of our individual properties. And if we open up property types, there's anything that's got content associated with it, which is our taxonomy. So it's apartments and houses and those kinds of things. But there's nothing inside here that allows us to know what we're going to use to actually add the link in to list all of our properties using the archive page template we've just created. So let me just show you how easy it is to deal with. You're not going to find anything inside the menu section. So I've set, created my menu. I'm just going to quickly save this so at least I don't have to come back and do this again. What we're going to do is come back to our meta boxes and to our post types. Now, whenever you create custom post types using a tool like Metabox or custom post type UI, lots of different tools allow you to create them. You'll have some basic information. And one of the most important pieces is the slug. And this is generally automatically created for you. So when we set up our post type, you can remember we put in the singular and the plural names and that automatically created the property in this example slug. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that from there. And this is basically what we're going to use for the link. 
So what we can do now is we can come back into our site and we're going to come to our homepage and we're simply going to come to the top to our address bar and we're going to put in exactly what we just copied, which in this example is property. We put a forward slash at the beginning and the end of that and we'll hit enter. And that will take us through and now show us the archive page template that we're using for these listings for the properties. So now we know that works and everything is correct. What you can do is you can simply copy this full address, come back into your dashboard, back into appearance and menus. And inside there, we can now create a custom link. We'll put the link that we just copied inside there and we'll just put in properties. You could, if you wanted to, if you were working on a development environment and your domain might change, you could easily just get rid of all of this and just simply have the forward slash property forward slash. And that becomes a link. Then it doesn't matter what domain. It's going to be the same link no matter where it is on the site. We'll add that to our menu. We'll reposition it to where we want. And we'll just save our menu. So now we come back in and refresh this page. We'll find there's our properties option. If we just switch back to home, for example, and then click on properties. That takes us into our archive and you can see that is now listed at the top inside the URL and everything is working the way that you want. I just wanted to show you that because this is one of those things that does cause a lot of people a lot of confusion when they start working with custom post types on how do you get the link and how do you do anything with it. Okay, so with that being said and that being covered, we're looking at our archive page we've created and now you can see there's our three properties. If we click in city views, for example, that takes us through now into the custom single post template with our property price and the location alongside the featured image, the title or the name of the property itself and the description of the property. If we come back out of this and go back to properties again and we choose a different one. So for example, we'll go to Bay View you'll see the data inside there is now showing up to do with Bay View. And this is the great thing about dynamic content. We can create templates that are assigned to all the different properties for this. We can create custom post types and meta fields and taxonomies, and we can get really creative on how this all works. Okay, so that's pretty cool. But one other thing I want to show you is this is great, but none of this is of any real use if you want to show people how to get access to the price, the location, and any other kind of custom metadata. We can't do that inside Elementor Pro itself. So we need to use a plugin. To do that, we're going to be using the free Elementor Custom Skin plugin. Now, Elementor Custom Skin is a free plugin. You can have a pro version, but you don't need it for what we're going to cover in this video. And what Elementor Custom Skin or LE Custom Skin as is more often referred to does, it allows us to create custom loop layouts. Now, what the heck does that even mean? Let's head back to our properties page. Each individual item you can see here, which features the featured image, the title, the short content and the read more. Each one of these is a loop item. So we're going to create the template that allows us to build one of these for ourselves, including any dynamic data that we want inside there. And then we can assign that to become the template inside our loop to show exactly what we want. Might sound confusing, but once you see it in action, it's not as complex as it sounds. So once the Elemental Custom Skin is installed, we have a new item inside the theme builder for, Word, for Elemental, which is the loop item. Gonna click inside there and we're going to create a new loop and we're just going to call this property loop and we'll just create our template. So once we open up Elementor, we can now close this down and we can start building our own custom loop. Now, don't worry about any template settings inside here. Don't worry about the header being displayed and the footer and the title. All of that's going to be completely ignored. All that we're going to use is what's inside this area. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a new section. And inside there, we're going to pull in the different pieces that we want. Come back into our normal widget selector and you can see all the single options are available to us in the same way they were inside the single post template. So we're going to do the same kind of thing again. Now grab that featured image, drop that inside there and just make sure everything is set up correctly. So we can come down to our settings section, preview settings and do the same again. So we'll set this to be property and we'll just use Edinburgh again. So we'll search for that and we'll apply and preview that. And then we've got some pre-filled data so we can see that we can use. Again, don't worry about the size of this because this is going to be much smaller when you create your layout, but you can create a layout in multiple different ways. We're going to kind of keep it very similar to what we've already seen. So what we're going to do is the same as we did before. We're going to drop the post title inside there. That's perfectly fine. But we're going to add in some custom data. So like we did before, we're going to just grab a heading, drop that underneath there, set this to something like H6. And what we're going to do is we're going to link the dynamic data up again. So meta box field, got the field, property price, and set our dynamic information before it. So we'll just put price, colon, pound sign. And there's our price. And we're going to just, for ease, we're going to select that. We're going to duplicate it. So we'll just duplicate that. 
So we now go through the process again, and we'll just change the data inside here from property price to property location. Change this, and we'll just put in location, colon and space. And now if we want to, we can add any more data inside here. We can style this any way that we want. So if we want to apply some drop shadows, all those kinds of things, outlines, we can select this section, and we can just simply come into our styling options. We'll apply a simple solid border. We'll have one pixel. We'll make this really, really light gray, so it's not too imposing and we'll set a border radius of eight pixels around there as well you're probably not going to see that inside here but once everything is all loaded up it'll look great advanced we'll put 15 pixels of padding around that that gives us a little bit more sort of separation between the various different elements now obviously you can set anything you want up inside here if we select the image for example we can set this to be linked so we'll choose link and we'll just say custom url and then what we're going to do is we're going to click on the little dynamic tags option and we're just going to tell it that we want this to go to the post URL. In other words, the URL of this individual post, which in this case is going to be Edinburgh Heights. You can also, if you wanted to, simply just drag and drop a button inside. So if you wanted to put a button to allow people to click and go through to that relevant property, you can click on there. You can set your custom link up by using the dynamic tags again. And again, we just use post URL. You can just say view property. You can get as creative as you want with it, to be honest. Let's just spell that correctly. There we go. So we'll just publish this. We're not going to worry about setting any conditions. We're just going to say save and close. So next on our list is to tell Elementor to use our custom loop. To do that, we're going to head back over to our theme builder. We're going to open up the archive page we created earlier. So there's our property archive. We'll edit this with Elementor. Once we open up Elementor, we're going to select our listing grid, our post grid. And at the top, you can see it says skin. Now cards is what we chose to make it look like this, but we can change that. And we have a new option now called custom. This is specific to Elemental custom skin. Once we choose that, that now allows us to choose what loop template we want to use. And there's our property loop template, which we just created. We'll select that. And now you can see that pulls in our custom design inside there. So we've now got our dynamic data, looks pretty ugly, admittedly, but you can see how everything is in place. If we just update this page now, and we just hop back over into our website, we'll refresh this, and you can see now we can click, take a look at any of our properties. So we can see there's Bay View, go back, City View, come back out, Edinburgh Heights. So now we could just easily come back in, style all this to make it look nice and pro, add any more custom fields that we might want to create inside these templates, and we now have access to working with dynamic metadata created and built through Metabox inside Elementor Pro. So now we've seen how to get started with the basics of Elementor Pro and combining that with Metabox. Hopefully this has given you an insight into what you can do. If you enjoyed the video, why not give it a thumbs up? It really does help me out. However, if you didn't find value in the video, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice, as that works pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.